What is going on you guys, it's Dragoon here, and I'm finally back with a new deck profile. Um, this deck has been really a long time coming, I mentioned in my last video that I got the idea for this deck back when I was in Japan, but I just never ended, ended up doing anything with it, and so I'm on my last day of spring break now, finally getting around to getting this recorded, had a lot going on these past few days, um, sucks the most, I actually got really, really, really sick once the play I was in ended, so, uh, as you can imagine, it was not a fun time, and I'm finally just about over that, um, still a little bit unwell, but we'll work through that, so let's go ahead and just get right into it, um, I call this deck, tentatively at least, I call it Beast Beatdown, um, the whole deck is based around beast monsters, and it's really fun, um, so, let's just go ahead and get started. So, the car that gave me the idea in the first place was Fencing Fire Ferret. I found out about this card really late after it came out. It was from Judgment of the Light, so... Um, I mean, I probably n knew of it a little bit with Judgment of the Light and all, but I never actually looked into it, I guess. So, basically, if you don't know what this guy does, um, whenever he's destroyed into the grave, he targets one of your opponent's face-up monsters, destroys it, and then if he does, he inflicts 500 damage to their life points. He's really, really good. He's kind of weak. He's only 1,700, but he gets the job done. I initially played three because the, the whole... It was just a... It started out as just a really silly concept uh, with three fencing fire fair and then just me goofing around and wanting to do funny things with this guy. But I dropped him to two because I drew him too often and then he just couldn't do anything. But he's really good because even if he doesn't... You can attack with him, and if, and if they kill him, something happens. Or if you want to, if they don't know the jail, you just set him. Uh, he dies, and he acts like a man-eater bug. So, really, really good card. I love this guy. And then I play uh, two Gene Warped Warwolf. Uh, this guy's okay. He's just a normal 2000. He just, I don't know, he's, he's just okay. I like him at the same time I don't. Um, if I could figure out something better, I'd consider taking him out, but he does... He does get the job done, so that's what matters. And then we've got two Beast King Barbaros. Um, I there should be three in this in this deck, but I just don't have three, and I didn't feel like waiting anymore because I initially only played one Wolf, and there's three Barbaros, so I really don't mind Wolf at one. I he he just not as great at two. So if you can get three Barbaros, do that, and only play one Wolf, or don't play Wolf at all. But he he's actually not bad if you just have one. Um, Barbaros is amazing. Um, I guess I'll reveal what this deck has become. Uh, there's, you play Skill Drain in this deck, and so that's where everything came from. Fire Ferret activates in the graveyard. Uh, this guy has no effect, so he's good whether or not you have Skill Drain. And if you have Skill Drain, he goes up to 3,000, so it's really, really good. So the whole point of the deck is to negate effects and beat your opponent down, so he is the king at doing that. And also... To go along with Beast King, one of my favorite cards in the deck, if not my favorite, it's three Photon Saber Tiger. Um, when he's normal summoned, he... or flip summoned, yeah. When he's normal or flip summoned, he adds another one of himself from your deck to your hand. So he's super good because he gives you instant advantage. Um, and if you have Skill Drain, it's not bad. You don't get that effect, but he his other part of his effect, if you don't control another Photon Saber Tiger, he loses 800 attack points. So... If you have the skill drain up, he goes right back up to his original 2000, so he's really good. He's really fun, too. Um, oftentimes, I'll just summon one, get out the other one. A lot of the time, I just I don't even need skill drain. I can just beat with these guys, 2000, 2000, and without having to worry about losing a whole lot of advantage because I got this and the third one for free. So it works out really nicely, and if I only have the one and they go to attack, I can flip over the skill drain and let their monster get destroyed, and I go up to 2,000, so. Really good. Uh, I love the artwork, too, so. Pretty pretty sweet. Alright, and then the next monster is Reborn Tengu. You play two of him, you can only play two. He's pretty self-explanatory. Whenever he's removed from the field in any way, um, you special the other one for the deck. You, I hate when you draw the both of them, though. It shouldn't happen, because there's you can only play two, but it does, and it's really stupid. But, um, in your first hand, it's really nice to open with both of these cards. Um, because depending on whether or not you, what, whether or not you go first or second, and also what the other cards you're playing are, um, it really works out nicely. You give many options, because you can just attack not with this guy, or, 
uh, do things with this guy and not really care what happens. So that is that. And we play one Thunder King Ryo. He's really good, especially with Skill Drain. And in any Skill Drain deck, in my opinion, this card's always been good. So it's the only non-beast or beast warrior monster that you're going to be attacking with. So uh, really good instant win against certain decks in certain cases. And then we have two Effect Veiler. Even though I do play Skill Drain, um, it's not very good if you draw multiples of it. So I wanted to play the Effect Veilers because I can at least use these as a tuner. And I can use them in my opponent's turns. Or even as uh, I can set it for defense or something like that. If I have multiple Skill Drains, they're just going to sit there doing nothing. So I play two Effect Veiler in the deck as well. And like I said, I don't know if I already mentioned, but uh, really good when your opponent goes first. You can at least do something. So I use it as a tuner more often than not, though. So, onto the spells. Um, we play a six card engine into getting the stuff that you need because the deck is very, very slow. You get one summon a turn essentially, and if you don't have the important stuff, you're going to lose. So, we have three pots of duality, two upstart goblins, and one fire formation tanky. So, these six cards help you to get exactly what you need. Pot of duality is pretty self explanatory. I don't like playing upstart goblin that much, but I wanted to thin the deck out and I didn't feel like adding anything because I felt like it was fine the way it was, but it wasn't at 40 cards yet. So I just added the upstart goblins um, because I didn't want to mess up what I had done. And then the one fire formation tanky basically just gets you to reborn Tengu faster. That's really all I care about. I don't like playing a lot of these because I need to have the, the space on the field. I don't like having this sit there because it only gives an extra 100, which is nice and all, but it's really not that great. So just one, it's really all you need is the third Tengu, and it can also search for um, Werewolf if you need to. But um, I once opened with this plus two Tengu, which was really, really annoying. So then we've got th uh, three Mystical Space Typhoon. You just need to be able to blow anything your opponent has set, because like I said, you get one summon, so you're very, very slow, and if they're going to kill your monsters, uh, you're not going to get very far, so you got to be able to get rid of the Mirror Forces, the Dimensional Prisons, the Warnings, what have you. And then I play two Smashing Ground. The card's really good in the Bujin matchup. Um, but basically, you really don't have any... You don't have a whole lot of means to destroy your opponent's monsters without attacking. Uh, the only card that can do that, if I remember correctly, is Fire Ferret, but he has to die to do it. So it's all about attacking. And if you can't attack, you're in trouble. So two Smashing Ground is really nice. Um, catches a lot of people off guard. Sometimes I'll smash their battle faders away in main phase two, which slows them down for the next turn. And it's just essentially a good card, especially you just you smash Yamato away if they don't have uh, what is it, hair I think that protects them. And because it doesn't target turtle, can't do anything about it. So uh, the card's really good and just it deals with problem monsters. And then for the one ofs, I play one Forbidden Lance. The card's really good. Battle phase protect your monsters. One Book of Moon, really good, you'll be able to run stuff over, and one Dark Hole, because, like I said, one monster turn, or one monster summon, if your opponent spams the field of monsters, you need to be able to do something about it, and this oftentimes is a major card to help you win. Under the traps, we have your basics, your super good cards, one Solemn Morning, one Bottomless, and Torrential Tribute. I don't play Compulsory Evacuation Device in this deck, because I want to just... I want the monsters to go away. I'd, the card just doesn't work quite as well. Um, you can try it, but for me it just didn't work quite as well as I would have liked it to in this deck. But these are all super good. And then I play two Mirror Force and two Dimensional Prison, just because you need to stop attacks. You need, basically with the traps in this deck, you need every single good trap card you can get in order to keep your monsters alive. Because once again, it comes down to that one summon a turn. You need to protect your monsters so you can do stuff with them and deal with your opponent's monsters if you're if they're too big. And then we get into the more specific cards for this deck: the two skill drain that I mentioned before. I don't want to play three because I don't want them to clog. So that's where the effect dealers come in, like I mentioned. But this card's so good; um, it really kills fire fists, it kills bujins, and destroys a lot of decks. It's just super great. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about Skill Drain. It just, it's it's a, always been a good card in my opinion. And I don't think anything has changed about it. 
And then we play two, Horn of the Phantom Beast. I really like being able to play this card. This card's just great. Uh, going to the damage step, hit, increase your monsters by 800 attack points, and then you get to draw whenever you're, you destroy a monster. So it puts a lot of pressure on your opponent, and it's just really nice to have. One of the best kind of equip cards in the game, in my opinion. And the last trap is Trap Stun. Uh, just play one. I actually just put this in, like, last night, I think, or the night before that. Um, it's a good card. I like I've I've liked it so far when I've drawn it. Um, but it's just more protection for your monsters and helps you OTK when you get down to that point. Well, I shouldn't say OTK because you won't OTK exactly, but it helps you go for game, I should say, when it comes to that because it's all about like like I said, uh, the deck is all about control and attacking and whatnot. Okay, so the extra deck. The extra deck really doesn't matter that much to be honest. Um, I play 15 cards in it because I want to, but I very rarely use it. Um, I play. I took this deck to Locals Thursday night, um, which was when I essentially had it finished, and I went 4-1, and I went, for the whole time I was there, I went to the extra deck twice, and one of the times was a time when I shouldn't have had to do it. But I'll talk about that whenever I get to that monster. Um, yeah, you don't need to go in the extra deck in, this month, in, in here at all, but... Because, like I said, you only get that one summon a turn. It's just, it's not very viable. But you should always play this stuff just in case. So, to start off, we have number 107, Galaxy Ass Tachyon Dragon. You can make it with two uh, Beast Kings if it comes down to it. I didn't do it at all the other night, but I've done it once before um, while testing online, and it worked out nicely. Uh, I've got Gym Knight Pearl. He's really good for when you have Skill Drain up, uh, Black Ship. My Stroke, Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy, Abyss Dweller, Photon Pappy Operative, uh, number 85 Crazy Bok, it's the best monster, the best rank 4 you can summon with, with Skill Drain, or at least the best one that I own, uh, super good, 3000, so really great. Uh, Lightning Chidori, I go into this relatively often actually, anytime I draw the 2 Tengu, I make Lightning Chidori if I can, um, it usually kind of offsets that negative negativity of drawing the 2 Tengu. Because this card's really good, and I really like having it. Um, just a really great card. And then this card I threw in last minute before the tournament was Diamond Direwolf, because I was looking through my binder trying to find something, and I was like, oh, I didn't even realize I wasn't playing this. So I took something else out of what it was and put this in. And this card actually won me a game. Um, I, I'm really surprised I didn't put it in initially, because the whole deck is beast monsters, essentially. So, good card. I overlaid my... Reborn Tengu that was special summon off the first one, and my Gene Warp Warwolf for this guy, and uses his effect, destroyed a Photon Saber Tiger and my opponent's uh, Void Ogre Dragon, so it was really good. And then rank 3 is because you have the Saber Tigers, you have the second best card to make when you have Skill Drain, which is Acegolm. I had the opportunity to make this guy a couple times, but I never actually ended up needing to do it, but... Um, it's just super good. You just run stuff over and it doesn't even matter. 3,000, 3,000. You just don't even care about anything because his effects are good. Uh, wind up Zen Mines. Leviathan Dragon. Didn't make either of them. I never have actually. And then the Synchros. You got one Stardust. I never made that either, but I made it once while testing. And that's it. Because you can make it with a t Saber Tiger, a f level 4, and Effect Veiler. So it's whatever. And then I made this guy last night in order to kill Marshmallow when I was playing against some stupid stall burn deck. So, Cataster. Make it with a rank 4 and plus effect killer. So, like I said, the extra deck, it's it really doesn't matter all that much. But if you don't like anything that's in here and you have your own personal preferences, go for it. Because it's not as integral as something like an E-Hero extra deck, which I think is more uh, structured upon being used and having the certain cards in there. This is all about what you think is good for the deck, since you rarely will ever use it. But anyway, uh, that's the Beast deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the deck's really, really fun, Like, but it, like I said, it's very slow. So you gotta kind of, if you're used to playing really fast-paced decks, you have to, in a way, uh, change your playstyle a little bit. But I'm used to playing slower decks, so uh, that's I guess that's why I really like this one. Just lots of control um, and skill drain. <laughs> it's always a good card. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile, and leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you later.